welcome, welcome. It's Friday night and we're cooking. So welcome to our cooking show. We are going to cook three dishes tonight. We have a quinoa salad. We have a ratatouille tart and we have chocolate pudding. I also have a special guest with me, Jamie, and Jamie is going to cook along with me. So we're going to kind of see how we, we do together and we're going to cook each of our dishes together. So we'll start out. What, what I'd like you to do is get your oven preheated because I want you to actually pre bake your, um, your puff pastry short while just because the moisture from the veggies as it cooks, it drops down and then your, your tart um, crust gets a little soggy. So we want you to be able to bake that just a little bit and then the moisture shouldn't affect it as much. Before we do that, I will start because I'm waiting for my oven to preheat and you may not have had yours preheating. So preheat your oven to 350 or I'm sorry, oops, 375, 375. So then next is you have a bag of quinoa. Okay, so we're gonna rinse the quinoa. And the reason we rinse quinoa is it actually has like a um, bitterness on it from um, saponins. So we're gonna rinse that in cold water. We're gonna rinse it for maybe a minute. So you can pour it in a strainer. If you don't have a strainer, then you can do it like you do rice where you put it in a bowl and, and rinse it. And then um, you'll be able to pour it into your pan. So we're gonna rinse it just in cold water. Okay, rinse it around and that gets, it actually drops some of the bitterness. Not that quinoa is all that bitter, but it definitely will take away a little bit of that bitterness. So if you rinse it for that minute of time, that will help. And a little fun fact about quinoa is it's not a grain. Everybody, a lot of people, not everybody, a lot of people think it's a grain, but it's actually a seed and it's from the amaranth plants. And so that plant family is also real um, in the same line as spinach, beets, Swiss chard. And so that's actually what quinoa comes from. Uh, and the other really great fact about quinoa I think it's kind of come and gone like the popularity it was really popular in the I'd say the 90s and then it kind of has dropped off but one of the best things about it is that it has all of our nine essential amino acids which means it's basically it's pretty close to a full protein there's a few things that are limiting but it's pretty close to a full protein uh so it, if we think of grains, we think of, oh man, that's a good question. Uh, most of your grains are on a plant, right? Like a wheat plant. A seed would be it. Ah, Tyler, that's a good, um, let me think. It's a, they're both plants, right? But it's truly not considered a grain. So how do I just define grain? Uh, no, a fruit, well, Kind of, I guess, if you think of fruits and seeds, but it's it's not considered, it's not a true grain. We know it as a seed. But get, um, gotta think back on that one and thanks for that question. That's a good one. So we're gonna put this into our pan and we're going to actually um, get this cooking. So put it into your whatever size, this is a giant pan for <laughs> what my volume is. But if you have a little bit smaller, that would be fine. Cause it's only gonna be a cup of water. So make sure you only do one cup of water, even though your recipe will say two. So we're gonna go one cup of water. Okay. Kind of wash down here. Oh, yeah, somebody, somebody pulled it. Oh, good. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, seeds are just the reproductive units of the small plant, and uh, the grains are just pretty much cooking seeds also, but are the edible part. Okay, we cook them both. Uh, it depends on what you look at. I mean, we cook the grains that we eat as grains, like wheat grains and rice grains. We cook them all. Okay, thank you for the the information on the, what is a grain? What's the difference between a grain and a seed? Sorry, that's not, I'm not a planty. <laughs> I'm a foodie, but not a planty person. So thank you for that. Okay, 
So we've got that cooking and we want to get it to the point where it's actually going to um, boil. So over high heat or whatever your medium high, which would probably be about eight, between seven and eight, you want to bring that up to a boil. We want to cook it uncovered. After we get it to that high heat, we're going to drop it to a simmer. And again, a big difference between boiling and simmering is the fact that one of them is constantly moving and one of them is more settled, but it's still going and your temperature is just a little bit less. So we're going for a simmer on that and it's going to cook for 15 minutes once it boils. Okay. So Jen, you're good with me too. Okay. So what we'll do next is cut up our veggies for our quinoa salad. And we do have um, some garbanzo beans and we have um, an onion and some cucumber, parsley. So you all should have flat leaf parsley and you should have um, a mini cucumber. I'd tell you wash all of these and we're even gonna wash our, um, we're even gonna wash our garbanzos. So I'm gonna put the garbanzos back into my strainer that I use for the quinoa. And we're gonna drain them. They're pretty much drained for you, but we'll rinse them. And if you don't rinse them, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, but rinsing it just kind of gets off that liquid from the canned process. And it actually can take away almost 60% of sodium when you rinse off veggies. So rinse off, I mean, rinse off canned products like canned beans. Most recipes will have you drain and rinse your beans. Okay, so you can rinse your parsley as well. Okay, so that's good. And then we will go ahead and we're gonna start cutting these. And it's basically, a. I always tell everybody to chop as your preference for biting into it. So depending on how big you wanna bite into something, that's how small you chop it. The onion is obviously a, a nice flavor, but if you are not a real strong onion fan, then you might use a quarter between a quarter and maybe um, two thirds versus the, the entire half that we provided, just because that will pull a lot of flavor um, in the long run. To make a chopped onion nice and easy for you so that you don't have to worry about um, chopping ring by ring, is if you have, an, a, this one doesn't have as much root left on it, but if yours has the root, don't cut that off. Cut the top edge off and we'll start there. And then we can actually take, we'll take as least off the top as possible and then cut with your lines, right? So cut with the lines of the onion. This is kind of that, we call that the Blumenau onion style. And then I will hold it together. So I'll have, I have a question for everybody and this will be our first question of the night. How many colors of quinoa do we have? How many colors is quinoa sold as? Or can you, one of them is, uh, I won't tell you yet, but there are four different varieties. So for your onions, if you wanna cut really small, just get as close as you can to each other and then you're not cutting really big, you get nice small chunks. But how many colors? do we have of quinoa? Yeah, you don't have to use the whole onion. I'm just gonna go half of that mixture. That it does, these are fairly good sized onions and it talks about a uh, small, from a small red onion. So, well, it even talks about three quarters of a cup chopped. Come over with me, Kelly. This is our, we're getting close to boiling. Right now, that would be considered a simmer. You see some bubbles forming here. So we wanna get it more rolling before we drop that heat down. And we're gonna drop the heat down to probably between four and five once it starts. And then we're gonna keep it uncovered for about 15 minutes. So we'll start a timer shortly. Okay, uh, let's see. So I think we have, we got enough onion. Then I'll add my, garbanzo beans. So we're going to mix those. I mean, basically we're putting those together. So the beans, and then we'll do our cucumber. 
So you can, again, chop your cucumber as um, small as you want. You can cut the ends off. And I'll cut down the center. And then I'll do a, you could even do thirds if you want to do it, it, smaller sizes. Line them all up. Did anybody come up with the how many colors of quinoa I have? Yeah. So I have, well, actually it's four if we think about the blend. So what colors are they? Somebody's, yeah, somebody has that. The right answer. What colors do we have? We're using white. So that's one color. Red, black, white? Yep. And then you can buy it as a mix of red, black, and white. So you have a multi-mixed. Now, quinoa is a high protein. Like I mentioned, it has all those nine essential amino acids. So it's high in protein, high in fiber, which is another plus. It's considered a whole grain because you eat the whole. That's kind of funny. You're saying it's a whole grain, but it's not a grain. <laughs> it's a seed. But it is considered one of the whole grain products so that we can use it as, um, and when we encourage people to eat whole grains, you could count that. All right. Here's my, that's my boil. I'm going to bring it down my temperature. I'm going to bring down to like four and a half. We'll see how that does. Cause we want it to simmer for about 15 minutes. So we're going to set our timer for 15 minutes. The fun thing about quinoa, and we'll see it when we, if you've never cooked with it before, it, it's like a sprout, it'll open up and it'll sprout. So we'll see that as it cooks and then you'll get to see the, um, the final product. So it looks a little bit more like a sprout. I'm going to mix my, um, we've got onion, we're going to get cucumber, bell pepper. So in your bell pepper, wash it. Yep. And we're only using half of our bell pepper for this recipe. The other half will be for the uh, ratatouille. So when you cut it, because we want concentric rings for the ratatouille, take your bell pepper and cut it top, uh, not top down, but side. Okay, so cut it in half sideways. Then we can scrape out the, the goodies at the top. But right now I just wanna use the half and then I'm gonna cut this up as, I usually just cut it with those little, um, what do you call them? Uh, lines of the cucumber. And then you could do however you wanna cut your, we're gonna cute, make little cubes, kind of like our cucumber. And then we'll chop that up. So some of the differences between the white um, quinoa and the other is that you've actually got the red um, and the black is a little bit more um, nuttier in flavor. So the white is really commonly used. We don't necessarily use the red and the black that often. So we have white is most of your quinoa salads and your quinoa dishes but it makes a nice maybe meat alternative as a, as a choice. So that makes this salad, the salad becomes a really high protein, high fiber, lots of vitamins in addition to all the peppers and we got vitamin C going on here. So lots of nice things with quinoa. Um, basically, if we thought of how much protein a cup of quinoa has, so we did a half a cup tonight. And yes, if you ate an entire cup of cooked quinoa, it would be, eight grams of protein, which is why it's a nice, considered a nice um, high, fi high protein, high fiber product. And you can use it for anything. It's pretty neutral taste, so you can mix it and add it to a lot of things. You can make um, like a patty and make it a burger. I've heard people do quinoa burgers. So we have lots of variations. And Usually your ratio of water to quinoa is two to one. So if you had two cups of water, you had a cup of quinoa. All right. Let's see. There's different um, parsleys out there. And a flat leaf parsley has another name. Does anybody know the other name of flat leaf parsley? That'll be my next question, everybody. What's the other name for flat leaf parsley? You can use the stems. Don't feel like you have to cut the stems off. I do usually cut the ends out, but I keep the rest and I use the stems. 
Jamie, how you doing? Good. Yeah. He's he's moving along quick with me. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody cooking online with us? And how are we doing? Okay, so I'm gonna just chop this up. Watch your fingers. What's another name for flat leaf parsley? I'll try and cut the stems just a little smaller, but otherwise you can totally use the stems. I tell everybody this with cilantro too. If you're making salsa, use the whole thing. You pay a lot for just the leaves. So if you cut it up nice and fine, basically it's minced like garlic. Not the leaf top, but the stems. You're not gonna know. Esther says Italian parsley. Yeah, Esther. Yes, this one is Italian parsley. Then there's American parsley, and then there's Chinese parsley. So tonight we're dealing with Italian parsley. Good. I'm gonna add that to my mix. This is all gonna just sit aside. It'll um, sit together. And then I believe my garlic is for my dressing, which I think I'll come back to, to make. Just because of, um, Actually, maybe not. Let's see. We want to get that puff pastry in. So let's do that before I make the dressing. And you should have a sheet of puff pastry that we're going to stretch out. If you do not have parchment paper, don't worry. You can put down if you have some um, butter, Crisco oil, just put that. It's basically just to help not have it stick to the bottom. So you can actually use, if you don't have parchment paper, you can use whatever um, non-stick surface ability you have. So I can flatten mine out. Unwrap your puff pastry. How's my time on my quinoa? It's pretty close to done. Nine minutes? Okay, we'll see how that goes. We may pull it sooner. I think it's just because my depth of my pan is so spread out that it's going to cook a little faster. And we don't want it to overcook. So take your puff pastry. Find that there's like a paper in between and we're going to unfold it. You don't have to roll it out because it is already the size that we need. And if yours is real sticky, just do your best to unstick it it the seams seem to be the challenge was anybody cooking online with us tonight jesse okay all right and we'll get this stretched out tyler and his mom are cooking along. oh wonderful Tyler was uh, one of our artists. Oh. That ends cooking. Super. I just put the, I unrolled it with the flowery. It's kind of flowery. Is that what you meant? Yeah. So I'll stretch it out a little bit more. And. I'm gonna do something called docking. And we do this with pie crust too. And I will get a fork. And what we're gonna do is poke holes in it. And that allows for the, um, basically as dough cooks, it's gotta have some way to give get rid of that um, heat that builds up, some steam that builds up. So I'll, pu I'll put a fork print in fairly close. This is also what we do with, like I said, with pie crust. You should do this with pizza crust. Just helps to get rid of the, you won't get those giant bubbles that form. No specific um, pattern. It's just to help reduce that puffiness, even though it's puff pastry. Okay, we wanna limit the amount of puffiness. So we're gonna put this in the oven and I'm gonna try five minutes and then we're going to see what it looks like so my oven is at 375 we'll try this and see how it goes and then we'll check it in five minutes my quinoa is done 
I don't want to cook it any longer or it will um, turn into to not good. So I'm going to get a, I think I need to let it rest for a minute. If I recall, the lid on. we're going to put the lid on for uh, about five minutes. So I'll take it off the heat and then I'll put the lid on and we'll let that rest. And then we're going to fluff it. So it's covered, it's going to rest, take a nap for five minutes. Now we can put our um, dressing together. So I have a small bowl. We have the uh, garlic and we have um, olive oil, lemon juice, red wine vinegar, and salt. So my dressing. Yeah. So you should have a, a container that looks like this and it's got a layer. Good question. What layers on top? Which layer is on top? Is it the oil or is it the vent? Well, we can see it through it, but what is, what's the top layer? All my science is, what's my top layer here? Jamie's got it. Yeah, it's the oil, right? Oil floats, fat floats. The density of it's less than the vinegar. So we've got olive oil in here, lemon juice, more than likely your red wine vinegar, and it does not have salt in it. So please add salt to your taste. And that is your combination. And then we're gonna add to this, not only salt, but we're gonna add our, we're gonna mince up our garlic. So you have a clove of garlic. And uh, I think I need to break it first. Not to worry, I have a little bit of parsley left on my cutting board. That will be just fine to add, and go into the dressing. So you can peel your garlic. If you ever have a, a bunch of garlic that's gonna go bad, you can actually freeze it. It's just, it won't be quite as potent as the initial. So you can freeze it, but you probably have to use maybe double from before. And then I'll cut off that little end. Now, if you have a garlic press, then all you do is push it through and take it out. If you have a garlic press as well, you don't have to peel it. You just smash it through it and the, the skin stays in the press and you just, you know, scrape off the ends. <clears throat> it blew my mind. Yeah, you don't even have to, you don't peel it. I mean, it, that's the benefit of those peeler, of those smashers is that you don't even have to peel them. You can, but I don't. It's just super fast just to put the whole thing in and um, start pushing it through. Sometimes if I have a really giant sized clove of garlic then I'll cut it in half and sometimes it peels itself but otherwise just put the whole thing in save yourself from making um your fingers smell like garlic and I always ask how do you get the fingers clean of garlic smell you like it <laughs> <laughs> smell like you're cooking uh Italian food all the time how do you get rid of that that garlic you smell on your fingertips and I usually go real mince. Whoa, I have not heard that one. Toothpaste. That would, yeah, rub stainless. You can, I wouldn't say your knife, but it could be a knife <laughs> if that's all you have. But usually you have a spoon or a fork. And the other thing that you have that's stainless is your faucet. So always think about your faucets as a backup. And you can, uh, got a little parsley in there. You can rub it on that. Okay. So salt. I think I'll just um, do like a couple of pinches of salt. And our shake. Not that I want to over salt, but we can always add salt after, but not. Um, you don't, if you add too much, you can't take it away. So I'll just mix it up a little bit. Absolutely. And we'll mix it up. Oops, so we create that dressing, temporary emulsion. So we'll mix that back up again before we um, add it to our salad mix. So here's your salad mix. Again, if you want more onions, you can add more onions on there if you choose to. Now, how's our five minutes on our crust? Okay, so that's probably pretty close to our quinoa too. So our quinoa, I'm gonna get a fork or um, and we're gonna kind of stir that up and just fluff it up a little bit. 
But if you look at it, you can almost see some of the little seeds, how they popped open and they have that little like, um, I don't know what you would call that. It's like a little uh, antenna. <laughs> Time is up on the pastry. Okay. And you can see, if you look at it, they've kind of popped open a little bit. And that is done. We'll let that sit up here and cool a little bit and I'll check my puff pastry. Uh, I think I want to, um, so what we want to do is we want that bottom. You can kind of see the middle. Let me pull it out a little bit. Oh, my light's going to come on for me. No. So if you look at the middle, that's where we were getting a lot of soft spots earlier. So this is looking good. We don't want it to overcook because we're going to make it browner than what we want with putting the veggies on. But I think I'll go another like two minutes. So seven minutes total on your puff pastry. And on the quinoa salad, all that's left is we're going to let that cool. And then we're going to add it to the serving mixture. And then we're going to drizzle the dressing on top and mix it all up. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside and we're going to grab our ratatouille items. So you have a half a zucchini, a half a yellow squash. You have a half an eggplant and you should have some thyme. And I think we all need time, so you can never have enough time, right? And I also have my the other half of my bell pepper. And these have been washed, so we're going to wash all this. Even though it's um, cut up, we're going to still wash it all. So you have a, a string of thyme, and we'll wash it. Just rinse them. I mean, we're not looking for, we don't have to scrub them unless there was dirt on them. But we'll clean them off. Okay. So depending on uh, which end of the eggplant you have, more more time. <clears throat> I love more time. There's certain like spices and herbs that I just think are, you can't have enough. Garlic is one. Um, thyme is one. Rosemary, I mean, they're all, they all have purpose. Might be enough. Okay. So depending on your eggplant, if you peel back those extra sides, you'll get more off your eggplant. Don't be afraid to peel it down to the white and get it to the absolute end. And then you can cut that stem off. And our goal is to cut these in really fine slices. If you have a mandolin at home, great. If not, don't worry. So we're going to cut that. Um, actually, I'm going to leave that on there. It'll make it easier to cut to the end. So what we'll do is cut these as thin as we can. I'm trying to go like a 16th of an inch. Right? The, remember, the thinner you go, the more it will cook in a faster method, faster time frame. All right. Yeah. Then we're talking. Okay. So... I'm going to take it out, kind of flimsy. Um, I got it. We'll just do it for the final. We'll grab another hot pad. But I'm going to leave that to um, to sit because that cools off pretty quick. So that's what we're going to look for on your pre-bake. That way it will cause um, less, I, I'm hoping less gooiness as we finish it off. You'll probably have a lot of extra, a lot, but you're gonna have some extra zucchinis. So remember your size of your puff pastry compared to what we're cutting through. If you miss, a, if you don't get quite that full circle, don't worry. It's just because we're gonna lay them out. Okay, I won't cut much further, but I'm gonna cut my eggplant, same, I wanna do the same thickness. A Little tougher to get through. So ratatouille is a French dish. It's usually served with other items, but it can be a it can be a main dish. A lot of times people serve it with um, like traditional ratatouille would be served with pasta. This one is nice because it's right on top of that puff pastry. So it actually creates its own base. Be a great hors d'oeuvre. Um, this is Super Bowl weekend, right? And so you have lots of reasons to create food 
food yummies. And so this is a really nice dish. Uh, super easy to make. I won't go all the way to the end. I'm going to do the same with the yellow squash. Try and get that. Okay. Um, ratatouille is also known as ratatouille niçois, the French term. And um, French Provençal is where it's originated from. And we've, of course, grown to love um, ratatouille from long ago. And Disney made ratatouille famous. So my next question is, what is the famous name of the rat that is our chef? <laughs> Who is the chef? Ah, was it? Remy was our chef and who was the cook that was, he actually was hired as the garbage boy. He was, that was his job, but what was his name? This is like trivial pursuit time. What's our, what's the, the garb, the, the, um, the one that Remy directed and taught him how to cook. Linguini. Linguini. No, mom. Oh, oh, that was, oh, that was. Oh, that was. <laughs> It was Linguini. So he was um, the, the boy that they tried to help learn how to cook. So what we're going to do next, we've got all our veggies cut. And then you want to, um, oh, we got to get our pepper. So what I would say is we don't want to lose that part of the, we don't want to lose our rings. So you can actually push through, push it through, and then you can twist the seeds out. And then I'll rinse all the rest of the seeds out. But that way we can keep our rings. I did find some really fun information about Ratatouille. So the restaurant that inspired the Disney Ratatouille is in where? Where is it located? Paris. So they did a lot of renovation on this restaurant. This restaurant is also known as Tour de Zant. Or the I, I'm it, I took French in high school, but it's been a while. A anyways, it the literal translation is Silver Tower. It was actually built and opened in um let me find my notes. Fifteen eighty two. It's technically they they list it as the oldest restaurant in Paris, and it's quite an expensive restaurant to go to. They have a three hundred and twenty rack wine selection uh, sorry 320,000 bottle of wine so they definitely have quite the selection and the book weighs I think I was reading the book weighs like seven pounds it's a book of wine bottle selections and they did a lot of renovations on it because it's that old right it's been around for a long time in fact um King Henry the fourth ate heron pate there so I think I'm going to have to take these little guys and cut them this way. But anyways, it's been around, obviously it's been around a long time and they did a lot of renovations because what happens in July of this year, what's coming July of 2024, not just the summer, but what happens in the summer? Anybody know what happens in Paris this summer? <laughs> Oh. oh, did anybody get it? No, it's close, Tyler. Mom says, uh, what happens in day? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, they're hot. The... She's not wrong. She's She's not wrong. It's the Olympics. Yeah, the Olympics are going to Paris this summer. And so they did all these renovations to get this restaurant up and up and running. And so they just recently reopened it in 2020, late 2023 to get it ready for the Olympics. Now, to give you an idea, when I said expensive taste, you got to have expensive taste. If you go for just a simple lunch, you need to plan on about $167 per person. If you want to go for dinner, and that's a little simple as well, you would end up being around $388 per dinner. So grand people, you know, the grand rich folks definitely enjoy this restaurant and it sits over, um, the Eiffel Tower, you can see the uh, Notre Dame. I mean, there's all kinds of fun things to see, just like you would see when he looked over, when Remy, or not Remy, but when uh, Linguini looks over the sky frame or the, the, what do you call it? The skyline and sees all those different places at dark. That's where 
where you'll get that wonderful view. So it is definitely a place to visit if you make it to the Paris Olympics this summer. Maybe that'll make you want to go to the Paris Olympics. All right. So we got our rings. Jamie, how you doing on your cutting? Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to take that puff pastry and we're going to put our tomato sauce on it. And I'll grab a spoon to, I'm going to drizzle a little bit across it, but we're going to take a spoon and be able to sh smear that around. And we're going to leave a little bit on the edges so that it puffs up kind of around it. Okay. So for those of you that have never seen the movie Ratatouille, you're going to have to go back and check it out. It's a great Disney movie. Lots of fun things happen in it. Remy was actually, his job before he became the, the top chef was he was actually the poison sniffer for his family, right? So that they had to check. He was the one that would sniff around to make sure that it was safe for his family to eat. So he was the poison sniffer. Um, and that's kind of fun to think that he turned into a chef. So he knew all that food. He was the foodie. So now we're going to do whatever design you want. You can lay it out in... Um, you could go, you know, circle, you can do rows. I think I'll do rows because we've got all these veggies on the square. So I'm just going to go alternating. So we're going to go like a zucchini and then we'll do a, um, a yellow squash. And then we'll do, I think my peppers, I think I actually want to do, they get big. And then so zucchini, zucchini, you get, get close to one another overlap a little bit and then peppers oh, maybe I'll try the pepper without having to cut it I forgot my eggplant it's like a puzzle zucchini squash right uh eggplant yeah our our rings are nice but if we had giant squash we can leave it it's your creativity this is your piece of art for the work, this is our work for you tonight. So all my food, um, art, fun. All right, how's my cooking group doing? I think what I will do is I'll set this aside because I don't want to run out of time. You can keep building and then we'll show you a, um, a finished product, finish building it and go all the way out. If you have extra veggies, you could try and fit them on there, but don't worry about it if you have leftovers because we don't want to overload it. If you overload it, then you get that soggy crust. So I'm going to set it aside. Yeah, and we d we take the, um, where do we put the thyme? The thyme is at the end with the feta. So if you have your feta cheese, you could mix in your, you could either mix the thyme in here or you can sprinkle your feta on and then, you know, crumble the, the, the thyme goes or the thyme in the, it's the thyme in the feta after you cook it. Um, so that goes on after that's what it shows on the. Oh, sorry. We do put it on before it cooks. So you good, Jamie? It'll work. There's no wrong. It's all about uh, putting it on the puff pastry. It's your magical art piece. So Kelly, can we can come down and check out. He's much, <laughs> he was much faster than I was. So we're going to check out Jamie's art. Oh, That's very pretty. And then we're going to bake it. He's going to bake that off. And then we'll come back and check his out. Because his will be done before mine. I got to um, finish. Oil. Yeah, your oil. oil, your salt, and your thyme. Pepper. Salt, pepper, and all that good stuff. So I'll set this aside. And we're going to do the pudding. Turn it this way. There you go. Okay. Actually, I can add my quinoa to my salad before I go. So here's your quinoa. 
nicely um it sprouted see that other thing i didn't mention is quinoa is 100 percent gluten-free so it's nice for anybody that has um, gluten intolerance or allergy so you can mix your your quinoa in here and i think i will um grab a wooden spoon and then i'll be able to mix it up take that out of the get as much out of my pan then i'll use a wooden spoon and get the rest okay and then i've got my dressing and again i would mix your dressing up one more time because right now it's kind of sunk and separated out so we'll make it back into an emulsion And there we go. Okay, so I'll mix that on top. And again, you can, um, if you need to add salt and pepper to it, you definitely can do that. And then I'll mix it up. Create that nice dressing. Not too heavy on the Onions, you can see the onions, but it's not overbearing. If you were, I mean, again, you can use the whole onion, the whole half, I should say, and you'll have a nice salad. So here's what your salad will be as a final prep. I have an edible pan down there, and those are um, definitely one of the edible flowers that we have. And then we have a little bit of the flat leaf parsley on, on there as well. Okay. So now we are ready to do our pudding. And I have, you have a packet of coffee that you will need to do hot water and you're gonna use eight ounces. So one of these is an eight ounce um, cup. So get a, eight ounces of water, pour your packet in. I already made some earlier and I only need, you only need two tablespoons, so don't, um, you get to drink the rest of the coffee. So if it's real hot, you can definitely um, enjoy your coffee. But I'll keep, I'll use what I had from before. You have uh, coconut milk and honey and, not honey, um, coconut milk, maple syrup, and that's it in our mix. Let me grab my recipe. So this one has, um, and we're gonna add the coffee to this. So what I did before I opened this is I just shook it really good because it did separate. And we are making pudding. So what's the difference between custard and pudding? That's the next question I have for you. What is the difference between custard and pudding? Get this ready. Riley says egg. Exactly. So there's eggs in custard and there is no eggs in pudding. So I'm gonna mix my um, cacao and I have my, yeah, I must have used my, that was the one with this, the quinoa. I might've used, um, I need another strainer because we're gonna put this through the strainer just to make it so it doesn't get so clumpy. And it is because cacao is not processed like cocoa. So there's cocoa powder and there's cacao powder. And the difference is the heat. So cacao is um, more of a natural raw product. Cocoa has been heated and is, um, they're both, the beans come from the cacao pod. Those are then fermented and then there's some heat used to do that part in the fermentation piece, but then we heat treat even more to make cocoa. So cocoa is much more, pro not much more, but it's processed more than cacao. So this is technically considered like a raw product and it tends to clump. So I'm just gonna combine um, this as best as I can without having to use my whisk and it'll get those big chunks out. And the only reason I try and break up chunks is because eventually those may or may not break down. 
You'll also possibly see some salt left in your strainer. If you don't have a strainer or you don't have a way to sift it, just mix it really good before you start your process. So now we have the cacao, um, we have the corn starch, and we have the sea salt in here. So that's the three ingredients that were in your little packet. So we're gonna next shake this up real good as I did. And then I'm gonna add that two tablespoons of coffee to it. And then I'm gonna actually use a fork and stir it just a little bit more. So I open that up. We'll get as much off the top as we can of the coconut milk. And then I have a, if you don't have an eight cup measuring cup, this is a little dinky guy. If you don't have one of these at home, two tablespoons is an eighth of a cup. So get your coffee ready, fill up your two tablespoons. You can add it to that cup. It will not overflow. It's close, but it won't overflow. I promise. And then you're going to mix that together. I just kind of mixed it within the container. Your, your chocolate pieces are going to stay to the side. I kind of mix that up. That's your coconut milk and your maple syrup. You're going to add your two tablespoons of coffee. If you want to use, you can use this one. And then uh, you're going to add your two tablespoons of coffee to that. And then we're going to mix it up and then dip it, not dip it, drizzle it across our cocoa powder. Okay. So if you get it, I mean, you're shooting for as much of a homogenous blended mixture as you can without going over. Okay. And so what we'll do is as I pour it in, I'm going to whisk it just to get it kind of mixed up. It's going to look a little separated for now, but it'll blend. Okay. So we know cacao is such a beneficial product, right? And that's why we've heard a lot more about chocolate and benefit. It's the, a lot of the flavanols, we've got antioxidants in there, which is heart protective. We have some iron, we have some fiber, we have magnesium. Uh, we do lose some of that when we cook it. So that's why if you ever have the opportunity and you have a choice, you'd wanna keep your cacao without cooking versus cocoa is already cooked and uh, you won't have as many nutrients lost. But a lot of times cocoa, unless you buy unsweetened cocoa powder, which usually will tell you it's 100% cacao, um, then you can bake with that and you're still getting, um, the, the cocoa, but a lot of cocoa powders, as we know, have sugar and dairy powder added to them that you could make your quick hot chocolate. I'm going to try and blend that in the pan so that it's not sticking to the edges. You might, uh, use a spoon or something to get to your final edges. Let's blend that up a little bit. We're gonna go on medium heat, not super high because you don't wanna scorch your mix. So I'm gonna just trying to get the edges really good. You can see how the powder is sticking to the edges a little bit. We'll put our mixture across that, blend it in. We're gonna put this on medium heat. Like I said, it'll thicken. Um, the cornstarch is your thickening agent, which is uh, amylose. If we looked at scientifically, um, cornstarch is amylose. As my students get to hear about in my cooking lab. So we use that and that's our thickening agent. So uh, there is some uh, fun stuff about chocolate pudding facts. So it's a variation of chocolate custard, obviously it was invented without the, there's no eggs in it. And it was inv invented by three ladies named Meredith, Helena, and Mary. General Foods introduced pudding mix in 1934, but our famous jello pudding that we see today is 1936. So I'm gonna put this on the stove top and we're going for, I wanna say medium heat, so five. We don't wanna go much higher than that. We're gonna stir it. Const I mean, it talks about constant stirring. You just want to keep it so it's moving so that your pan is not directly scorching that mixture. And then it, we're going to see it thicken up and take a few minutes. It's going to start to simmer. 
We'll see it bubble. So the the whole thing with custard and pudding was, you know, it was an alternative instead of using the eggs. And so chocolate pudding today is obviously we know it as Jello brand pudding a lot of times. And there is a a day of the year that is known as chocolate pudding day. And if you ever want to think, and let's see if we can get a month. I'll give you I'll I'll give you the day if you guys can guess a month. What would be a a chocolate pudding month? What would you expect chocolate pudding month to be? Because it's same day every year. That's a good guess because of chocolate, right? But it's not February. You doing all right? So we still don't have a simmer yet. December. And another good guess. So we got two months down. We got 10 more to go. October. No. It's probably going to throw you off a little bit. November. It, so I'll, I'll take it out. We've hit the winter months. It's not in a winter month. April? It's past April. May. Past May. July. Before July. <laughs> it is June 26. It's considered chocolate pudding day. They actually have the earliest like referenced print of um, pudding and reference of chocolate pudding all the way back from 1730. So it's been around a long time. And um, there are different types of chocolate pudding. There's two different types. The traditional type that we're familiar with is boiled and then chilled and then it's set up with a starch. And that starch is the cornstarch. And that would be typically seen in the US, Canada, Germany, Sweden, Poland, um, East and Southeast Asia. There's another version. Has anybody else had the other version of chocolate pudding? Let me ask that before I go too far. Has anybody ever had the different style of chocolate pudding? Uh, chocolate mousse is a little different. That's more of a like whipped cream base. So chocolate pudding is also steamed and baked. So it would be more cake-like. And that comes from uh, the UK, Ireland, New Zealand, Australia, and Germany. So they actually have it more of a cake-like. So you think of chocolate pudding, um, if you were to talk to somebody from those areas, they would think of chocolate pudding as more like a cake versus we think of it as more of a soft consistency that's close to custard, but without the eggs. So my, my heat is taking a little bit of time on this one, but that's okay. What we don't want to do is we don't, I don't want to turn it up so hot that it gets, it will scorch and scorching would show like a burn mark on your pan. And I think we, I can smell um, stuff that's on the burners, which always is wonderful. How's our cooking group? How's our, um, how's our timing on our ratatouille? 17 minutes, okay. So while we're waiting for this to finish, I do have some key information for all of you. We surely appreciate you all joining us every one of these CTAR cooking shows. We've had so much fun. We are going on a sabbatical though, and we will update you as soon as we find out when our sabbatical will end. But in the meantime, there are so many opportunities through CTAR. We're going to have a CTAR conference, which comes up April 11th through the 13th. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. That's part of the um, CTAR presentations of research, as well as a nice banquet at the end of that time frame. And there's also tours that are going to go on all over campus, all over the island of Oahu. So be on the lookout for that you will find something of choice. Um, and I believe all the tours are free. So you can join any tour that you would like. We might even be able to drum up a cooking tour of some type. So keep an eye on that if you wanna join in that um, cooking adventure. But we surely appreciate all of your support over the last, we've been doing this now since November of 2020, November of 2020. So we are going, this would be our fourth year in the fall. 
three and a half years. So we've done a lot of them. You can find them on CTAR's website at the CTAR YouTube or YouTube, sorry, YouTube um, CTAR cooking show. Maybe Jessica put the link in the chat. And you'll find us there. So you can look up, we've done recipes for a long time. So you are definitely welcome to, to check out those um, prior cooking shows. And you'll find some, we've had some real fun, all kinds of exotic dishes down to just real simplified. So look for something that is of your taste and enjoy those. The, all the recipes are included, the, you know, so for all your ingredients, you'll be able to find that. So we can acknowledge, I'll acknowledge um, Jesse Radovich, um, Kelly Tagauchi, all of our students that have been a part of this. We sure are grateful. This was a brainchild of somebody that asked, what do we do with food that's given to us? And that's where this all started. So we hope to be back in the fall. We will keep you posted. But so much time has um, gone and we're, we're shifting gears and we're gonna see what we can do in the future. So please join us soon as we find out. Been good. It's starting to get a little thick. Uh, one of the things with starches is you wanna cook them and let them kind of simmer. Oh, now we got some boiling going on. So we really wanna boil for a minute. That gets rid of a starch taste. So at least get this form of bubbling and then cook it about a minute and then watch your thickness. You get to decide what your desired thickness is. And then we have, um, we're gonna pull it off after we get it to the point where we're at, at our happy thickness. You get your happy spot of whatever your consistency is and you can see that it's thickened up. And the nice thing is, is it will thicken some more in the fridge. So you don't wanna over, over cook it. And we're gonna put our chocolate in as well. So that's a nice um, consistency. And I think I've almost gone a minute. I would say we're close. 35 seconds to go, 23 seconds to go. Okay, so we'll, we'll let that go for that minute. Then we're gonna pull it off and you have a bunch of chunks and you have a little bit of vanilla. And it is in a really tiny um, thing, but we'll use, uh, it's like a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, I'm gonna pull that off the heat. And we're going to add our chunks of chocolate. And then we'll do a half a teaspoon of vanilla as well. So you can just add this in. Okay. Yeah. Are you just looking at your consistency? Thickness. And then we're gonna go a half a teaspoon of vanilla in there, and then we're gonna mix it up. And then you can pour it into whatever container that you wanna do um, your final, you know, if you want to put it in a ramekin or a custard cup or something to that nature, definitely can do that. So your chocolate melts. I will give you a heads up. This is um, this is more of like a bittersweet um, chocolate. So it's not going to be your super sweet chocolate pudding that you're expecting or that you may have had from Jello brand Jello. It's definitely a, um, it's bittersweet or much more um, bitter, right? Your cacao is more bitter than cocoa. Okay, so you can pour it into a container to cool and you should have a nice solid, put the saran wrap or however you cover it, put that down right on top and then you won't form that, that skin and then you can decorate it up to however you want. But that is your chocolate pudding for the evening as a dessert. And then you also have your puff pastry with your ratatouille veggies on top. So we took the ratatouille tomatoes and that's the tomato sauce. So it's a little spin on typical ratatouille. Like feta, and then feta sprinkle your feta on top and you have a full meal. So we'll put your, we'll give us a, a, a good view of all the fun things that we put together. All right, done. Six o'clock, right on time. It's probably gonna turn 6.01 before we get off. Thanks, everybody. Have a super Super Bowl weekend. Go Niners and be safe. And we'll see you all when we come off our sabbatical. But thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate you all. Have a great one. Take care, everybody. Bye.